so for 10 or 15 minutes at a time, they're going to try to force ADHD, medication, or special ed on you. So I think one of the problems here, we didn't prepare him for school. The first time he's been expected to sit down and listen without touching anything is in this classroom. So part of this is our fault. That's number one. Number two, you might have to hire a psychologist to observe your son in that classroom. She's complaining on day two. I have a problem with day two complaints. I have a problem with day two complaints. I have a problem with a teacher that's already complaining on day two. That sounds like an inflexible teacher who's very rigid and has very little student skills. That's what it sounds. Very little, very poor social communication skills with her children. Day two, that's a bit much. So you might got to start finding you a black psychologist or behavior specialist to go into your son's classroom and observe him in the classroom. Because we don't know what's going on in that classroom. How do we know all the children aren't doing the same thing? How do we know she's not singling your son out? Are these children mostly black? Are they mostly white? Is your son one of one in a sea full of white children? What is the environmental dynamics of this classroom? Because if your son is one of the only black boys in it, this is a clear sign that we are headed for the criminalization of your son. Okay, so you got to give me a little bit more information on this situation. Is, there, is this a potential racial profiling? Is your son being racially profiled? Is your son simply have never been taught discipline? Is your son spoiled? Is he used to doing whatever the hell he want to do when he wants to do it? There's a lot of things we got to look at here. And I need you to be honest about it. But my biggest takeaway for black children, for black parents, is we got to get our sons ready for kindergarten. We can't have them doing what they want for five years and then they go into a class where they've never been expected to sit still for 15 minutes. I'm going to be honest, and I don't defend Snow Bunny teachers, but they have a point. They have a point. If your son ain't got no discipline at all, ain't been taught no discipline, and you just drop them off at kindergarten at a public school, that's not fair to the teacher. So I'm just keeping it a buck. My children attend private school until seventh grade due to change in finances. Can you offer an excellent homeschool? I don't even know where you live, good brother, to offer you a homeschool. You didn't even give me a city. My name is Lonnie. I have a son, age 13. We live in Maryland. My son is getting ready to transition into private school, predominantly black after being in public school. My son is also a byproduct of racial discrimination. I voluntarily chose to change his school for the last two years. Is there any recommendation you have for my husband and I as our son gets prepared for the transition? Is he going to a white school or a black school? You said getting ready to transition into a predominantly black school. Is he going to a black private school? You said a, if it's a black private school, I think he's fine. If it's a black public school, he might have some adjustment issues. This is Melanie from Richmond, Virginia. I better see you in Petersburg uh, Sunday, Melanie. I want to know, are you accepting donations? Money for the kids in the events August 20th in Petersburg. If so, where do we send it? Yes, Melanie, I want you to get in contact with the hosts of that event. Let me pull her up right now because they are accepting donations. I've just been too busy with everything I got going on to really get involved in that at this time. Copy. But please call Sister Alnisa. And she will let you know how to make your donation. That's for anybody coming to Petersburg on Sunday. They're accepting donations for the children to help them from school, help them with school. So if you come into the Petersburg lecture on Sunday at 464 Burn Street in Petersburg, Virginia, from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m., 464 Burn Street. 
B-Y-R-N-E, Petersburg, Virginia, this Sunday, 4 to 8. Please bring some kitty socks, some kitty shirts, some underwear, you know, uh, socks, T-shirts, flip-flops, school uniform, anything you want to donate to make sure our parents can get their children to school. Um, that would be a good thing. Let's see who else we got here. Okay. Somebody just sent me some eye candy. It's consciousness over cookies, my beautiful chocolate queen. Somebody just sent me some eye candy. It's consciousness over cookies, my beautiful chocolate queen. Let's go to Sister Candace in Philly. Bring a book bag to Petersburg. Hello. Sister Candace, how you doing, beautiful? What's your question, gorgeous? Good to hear from you again. You was at the Philly boot camp, right? Yes. Good to hear from you again. I don't remember you, but I got you saved in my <laughs> phone, so I know you were there. Go right ahead with your question. Um, so I guess I'm kind of nervous because um, school is approaching. And some might he is in the autistic support class, uh, maybe, maybe because of his behavior, um, because they... He's in a regular classroom for um, for math, and during that, those math um, like classes, he just like acts up. Like the math, the regular uh, first grade teacher, she used to send me pictures. Like he would be like laying on the floor, like just not listening, like just doing his own thing. What grade he going to? Um, he's going to the second. Oh, he young. And so you give me that again. Your biggest concern coming up is what again? I'm sorry. Give me that again. Yeah, just him going back, and I just like I have no clue like what to do. Like he's I'm not like, full time, is he? Uh, is he? Uh, yes. The only time he leaves autistic support is for math, and that's because like math is his thing. Like he's. Already uh, ha have I ever saw your son's psychological evaluation? I, I, I need you to send it to me. I need, I need you to send it to me. He's not intellectually disabled, correct? No, not at all. Okay, because I'm going to tell you like this. When, when was he first evaluated and classified as autistic? What grade? I hate to tell you this because I know you're going to say it's bad, but um, it's probably like two years old. Two years old? Your son was classified as autistic at two years old? Yes, CHOP did the testing on him at two years old, and they classified him as autistic because he had delays. Okay. Even though CHOP's classified him as autistic at two, the school district still had to do their own evaluation. When was he classified as autistic for the school district? Was that kindergarten, first grade? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, or was it, it pre-K? Yeah, it was kindergarten. It was kindergarten, okay. So, children have to be reevaluated every three years. When he got that kindergarten evaluation, was that the beginning of the school year, do you know, middle, end? Um, it, was, um, I, it was like October. Okay, so it was like the beginning. So, if he was evaluated the beginning, if he was evaluated October of kindergarten, that means... K to one, one to two, two to three. He's going to the second this year or the third? Yes, he's going to the second grade this year. Okay, because third grade, he's due another evaluation. But I think you need to request one this year. A parent, according to federal law, a parent can request a psychological reevaluation by the public school every year if you want. The school has to do one every three years. But you can request one every year if you want. You feel me? And I think that you need to request one to get some current skill levels. First of all, I'm very concerned that your son is in an autistic support class all day. Is he high functioning, moderate or low? Um, he's, he's high functioning. If he's high functioning. So you're telling me you're okay. Can you do you believe your son can do regular second grade math in the regular class? He, he what about what about reading in language? Could he do that on the regular in the regular class, second grade level? Yes, it's just the like I told you, it's the 
the discipline part. But but listen right. to me, listen to me, listen to me. They cannot discriminate against him and isolate him from the regular class because he's a behavior issue. If he's a behavior issue, he needs a behavior plan and a one-to-one -one aid. But they cannot deny him his free and appropriate public education, F-A-P-E, because he got behavior problems. They cannot do that. Now, the only exception to that is if your son is a real badass. Now, is he a badass or he just do regular regular boy stuff? Now, if he's a if he's a if he's a terror, that's a different issue. Yes, I feel like it's, it's regular boy stuff, but it's just I feel like how many how many days of suspension did he have last school year? How many days of suspension? He didn't, have any. He didn't get suspended a single day last school year. Then let me tell you what I would do if I were you. Number one, I'm calling an IEP meeting ASAP and I'm telling them that my son is no longer full time autism because that's a violation of FAPE. Free and appropriate public education is also a violation of LRE, least restrictive environment. And I know you remember this from the training. Yes. A child can only be in special ed, only can be in special ed. To the extent necessary needed to learn. That's it. If you're telling me your son can learn in the regular class, he should only be going to special ed for autistic social skills training and related issues. That's it. His reading, his math, his science, his social studies, all of that should be in the regular classroom. And if your son can handle regular classroom work, they are violating his rights. You need to call an IEP meeting and tell them they're changing the amount of service. Remember, IEP team responsible for three things. Program, what your child is going to learn in special ed. Placement, where they're going to receive the special ed. And progress, making sure special ed benefits your child. You have a program issue and you have a placement issue because he's being over special educated over and if you leave him in there sister your son will be a statistic because i can guarantee you he ain't learning much in that damn full-time autistic class i can promise you that not in no north philly school well, what part of city you in same thing yeah. same thing call an iep meeting tell them you want him in a regular class for all major academics He's only going to autism. Tell them he only gets an hour. I think he don't need no more than an hour a day in that autistic class. What do you think? Um, I agree. He, That's what you he, need to tell him. Like, the way that he talks to me and stuff is just like, he's very aware. He's socially aware. He knows what he's doing. Like, the, the conversation, the way he picks up on everything. Um, I, I believe, yeah, he should he should be in there. Like, That's what I feel like. I feel like it's like he's not learning anything. Like one of the things the autism support, they don't have any ex expectations of the kids. Like, they don't. Homework. Throw away. Throw away. The autistic support classes in Philly are one step above life skills. And life skills are the classes for the educably mentally retarded. Severe and profound intellectually disabled. Get your son out of there. Call an IEP meeting. Do not go to that meeting by yourself. Do not go by yourself. And in addition to that, you're going to tell them you want a new psychological evaluation to get current levels for your son. Okay. How long should I, I wait for um, them to take him after requesting for them to take him out? It's, it's automatic. There is no wait. You sign the form right there, and by I would give them to the end of the week. That's it. There ain't no wait. There ain't no wait. I want my son in a regular class for all his major subjects. That's it. And if they don't give it to you, you're going to take them to due process with the state of Pennsylvania. We'll talk about that later when we have to cross that bridge. Okay. But you have to stick to your guns because they're going to want to try to fight you back. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're going to want to fight you back because they don't want to take them out that class. They also need to keep a certain amount of kids in that class before they have to eliminate that teaching position, which means that that teacher gets sent to another school somewhere they don't want to go. There's a lot of politics involved in keeping your son in that class. You have to stay on your ground, which is why you cannot go to that meeting by yourself. Is the father around? No. Okay. Uh, let your brothers or your uncles go with you to that meeting. If you ain't got no men, you can take with you. Take some strong, take some, take some strong sisters with you. Get you a couple of them strong feminist sisters to go in there with you. But don't get bullied. Whatever you do, don't get bullied. And you demand 
the service agreement. You tell them, I need the special ed service agreement to say that my son will get all his major subjects in the regular class and that he'll only be going to autism for an hour a day. I might accept 90 minutes a day, but no more than that. Okay. They got your son. They got your son on the juvenile incarceration track. That's what he's on. Anytime a black boy is in a special ed class all day, I don't give a damn what class. I don't care if it's autistic support, life skill support, emotional support, learning support. Any black boy in a special ed class all day is on the juvenile incarceration track or prison track. Because that's the only place you're going to end up being in special ed all day. Get your son out of there. Okay. <laughs> and keep me posted. Sure. Um, so I heard you talking about like the services and how you feel like that they're bad. So um, I would have to agree with that. So last year, like for the first six months, he had no occupational therapy at all. That means they owe you comp ed. See, y'all have to keep track of that. Y'all have to keep track. Right, but 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 let me say this. Let me say this because I want the other parents to hear too. Since we live. I need parents to keep track of the missed speech therapy sessions, keep track of the missed occupational therapy sessions, keep track of the missed PT therapy sessions and add them up at the end of the year. And if you get like 20 hours of missed service, you need to call an IEP meeting and tell them they're going to pay for your son to get 20 hours of service during the summer from a private contractor. Y'all can't keep letting them get over. They get money for special ed. Special ed is a business. It is a subsidy. Y'all can't let them scam your kids out of this money and then just walk off like that. Y'all got to hold them accountable. But go ahead, sister. Yeah, so it's just, I have been emailing the principal and the, um, the special, like the, the teacher, just everyone you know, telling them that I wanted to be, because you told me the, the, I forget, was it the compensatory? Compensatory ed, ed exactly. Yeah, I, I had requested that in the emails, and they they told me how much I was due, but, and I've never gotten anything. Because you didn't follow up. And they depend okay. on y'all not to follow up. Mm -hmm. They depend on y'all not to follow up. It ain't too late. You can go back for it. But if you want to start that fight, you got to finish it. Yeah. The main thing is, I guess we're just going to focus on for now. Just get him out of there. Autism. Get him out of there. Get him the hell out of there. And you want him reevaluated because I don't think the boy autistic. Do you feel he is? Do you believe your son is autistic? That's question number one. And question number two, even if you do feel he's autistic, do you feel he's autistic enough to have to need autistic support class? No. Then, then get him out. He shouldn't be in there. Don't let him be in there. I'm glad we're having this conversation in second grade and not eighth. I'm glad we're having this conversation in second grade and not eighth. You got to do what you got to do. Call that meeting and change the, change the level of service. And request a current evaluation. Okay, well, I guess I got some work to do before September. Thank you so much. No problem. Keep me posted. Okay, I will. All right, beautiful. Today is the autistic clap. The autistic. Do y'all realize we've had more autistic issues on tonight's call than any other teleconference we ever had? Like, this is autism on steroids tonight. Tina from Maryland, six-year-old boy, going to first grade, IEP for speech in DD, developmentally delay, behavior at school out of control, throwing chairs. Oh, hell no. I'm calling you, Tina. Tina, we got to talk, Tina. Uh-uh. Tina, his ass will be in prison. Tina? Hello. Sister Tina, how you doing, beautiful? Good. How are you? What part of Maryland are you in? Frederick. Frederick, okay. Now tell me what's going on with your son. He's throwing chairs. To, what, what's going on? Yeah. Um, what grade he in? What grade he in this year? This year he'll be in first. He'll be in the first grade. So in kindergarten, he was throwing chairs. Yes. What else was he doing? Issues. 
um, they would call us, me and the husband, to go pick him up just because, you know, the behavior was out of control, you know, saying no, um, staying out, you know, at the playground after it was time to come in. And the only classification he has is speech. No, speech and developmental delay. Well, developmental delay is generic. Developmental delay for what do they think he might have? What is the, where is he developmentally delayed? In what area? Um, that. And how old is he now? He's six. He's six. Because if memory serves me correctly, they will no longer be able to use developmental delay beyond his eighth birthday. So they either going to have to drop it right. or call it something else. Right. Yes. Um, He's not intellectually well, disabled, right? No. So tell me about the throwing chairs. Is he spoiled? Is he used to just doing what he want to do? I think that that's something. Y'all got to get that like because because y'all got to get that. Let me explain something. Having an IEP does protect the child behaviorally because they cannot be suspended beyond 10 days for behaviors that are related to the disability. But guess what's not covered in that protection? Weapons, drugs, and serious bodily injury. Your son throwing that chair, that is considered a weapon and it can cause serious bodily injury. So his IEP will not save him if he keeps that behavior up. He can get arrested. Yeah. So yeah. y'all gotta, y'all gotta. I, I, I think th is this a spoiled thing? It might be. Y'all gotta get on it. He doesn't act like that at home. Like with being his dad, he doesn't. Let me ask you this: chairs. He doesn't elope. What were the consequences at home? When y'all learned that he was throwing chairs, um, you know, dad spanked him. We took away, you know, no outside, no TV, uh, making him, you know, clean up after himself. See, but let me tell you what's going to happen. He doesn't understand it. He's if he does that again after the 10th day of suspension because special ed kids can only be suspended 10 days after the 10th day if they want to suspend him again or if they want to expel him from the school they have to conduct what's called a manifestation determination which is a fancy way of answering two questions number one is the child's behavior related to the disability your son is only classified with a speech problem and a developmental delay Throwing chairs cannot be explained by speech impairment and developmental delay. So he's not going to get that question. And the second question is whether the IEP was developed and implemented effectively. And I don't think we're going to win there either. Now, I will say this. If your son exhibits a pattern of behavior problems, the IEP team has to develop a functional behavioral assessment and positive behavior plan for your son. Have they done that yet? Yes. Have y'all been called yes. in? Okay. Mm -hmm. the well, if, VIP, yeah. well, if he's still throwing chairs, then the behavior plan is not effective, which means there needs to be another meeting to revise it. The behavior plan is not a one and done. You keep redoing it until the behavior is gone. So if y'all did a behavior plan, he's still throwing chairs. The behavior plan is not effective. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Is it possible that how bad is his speech problem? Is it so bad that people can't understand him and he's frustrated and that's why he's throwing chairs or that ain't it? Um, I think that's a part of it. He, he's getting outside speech therapy and he gets speech to the school. He he's he's vocal and he can have a conversation, but you, you can tell he's it's just a little delay in the speech area. Like he can't, you know, get out, you know, what he's feeling all the time. I need y'all to set up a behavior plan with him. Get you a calendar and have the teacher let y'all know how you do every day. Let him know there's going to be rewards at the end of the day. He's young, so you can reward him every day. Don't use money. Don't use toys. Don't use expensive gifts. Children want your time. You have a good day at school. We get to watch a movie together before you go to bed. You had a good day at school. We're going to go to the zoo on Saturday. You had a good day at school. We're going, we're going to pop some popcorn together. It should be activities. Activities and time for children at young. 
Put him on a behavior plan. Let him know what the rewards are going to be. Let him know what the punishments are going to be too. And let's see if we can motivate him out of that. I also think I might want to consider hiring a psychologist to go into the classroom and observe the behavior to see if it is as bad as it's being reported and or also to see if he's being triggered by the teacher or other students. I think there's more going on than what we're being told if he's throwing chairs. I think there's far more going on unless he's just that out of control. But I think there might be some other triggers being pushed in that class that the teacher isn't telling us about. You might got to hire somebody to go in there and, and take a look because until you have another set of eyes in that class, you will never know what's really happening. That's why I always tell parents before you start doing too much, hire a psychologist or behavior specialist to go into that classroom. Right. I also think it wouldn't be a bad idea to get him a couple sessions of therapy by a private psychologist just to see if there's anything going on that needs to be addressed in his thinking and his emotions. Because that it sounds a bit much. Yeah, because I, you know, I asked him actually today. I was like, "Are you ready to go back to school?" And he said, "You know, he said no." And I asked him why, and he said, "Because the work is hard." The work is hard. He's going to kindergarten. No, first grade, right? First grade. Mm -hmm. Is the work hard? He he can read. He, he knows math. Or well, is he is he is he just is he spoiled? This could just be a spoiled problem. He just want to do what the hell he want to do when he want to do it. And if that's what it is, I got to break him out of that. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Yeah, I got to break him out of that. Because uh, if he keeps that up, they're going to try to force you to have him reevaluated for emotional disturbance. And you don't want your son classified with an emotional disturbance. But that's what's going to happen if this doesn't stop. But hold their feet to the fire. I would tell them we got to sit down and come up with another behavior plan. Guess what else your son can get? He can get a one-to-one -one aid. He has an IEP. Y'all might need to bring up a one-to-one -one aid. They're not going to want to do it. But guess what? They don't have a choice. If he needs a one-to-one -one aid to stay focused in the classroom, they got to pay for it. That is the law. Yeah. He had a, well, I guess it was just like a teacher aid in the room. That he was, he okay, but I'm talking. I ain't talking about the teacher's aid. I'm talking about a one to one aid that goes where he goes. He won't get it all day, but in the during the times that he's most likely to go off task, he should probably have that one to one aid until y'all get his behavior under control. Mm -hmm. I would I I would call an IEP meeting and demand the one to one the one on one aid. That's what I would. He he's entitled to it. Yeah. Question: Did your son ever witness any trauma in the house, any domestic violence, or anything? No. And he's never been emotionally or physically traumatized. No. Okay. To me, it sounds like he's spoiled. That's that. That's that would be the simplest explanation. Or there's something else going on beneath the surface that I don't know about. I have a feeling it may be something else because in pre-K, you know, for the three-year-olds, the teacher did want to give him that autism um, classification, but we... Oh, Lord. Um, Stay away from that. Yeah, he was too young. He ain't no damn autism. He throwing chairs. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he socializes with the other kids, right? He is. So he's not all... If he's, now, if you tell me he don't communicate with the other kids, he shies away from them... He prefers to do his own thing. Now, that's more like autism. But if he playing with other kids and communicate with other kids, how is he autistic? Autism is a communications impairment, a neurologically based communications impairment. How is he autistic? Right. But yeah, the behavior, I think they're, you know, rely on the behaviors which have been out of control this past year. Okay. Well, think about what I talked about. And if we need to do a private consult, just let me know. Shoot me a text. Okay. I will. I appreciate okay, Queen. It. No problem. Have a good evening. Me too. All Thank right. You. My name is Dave. I'm from Columbus, Georgia. My wife and I got three-year-old boy autism. My goodness. I think autism is the new diagnosis of choice for black boys. 
I think autism is the new diagnosis of choice for black boys. I think autism is the new diagnosis of choice. Three-year-old boy autism goes to speech twice a week, school three times a week. We're waiting on ABA therapy. Georgia is slow. Is there anything you can recommend while we wait? He's a very smart boy. He can count. He knows his alphabet. My, my, my biggest question for you, Brother David, in Columbus, Georgia, where is he on the autistic spectrum? Is he high functioning? Because if he's high functioning autism, he might not need much. He's only three. It's only so much ABA.